Okay. Well, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Hind Khayel, the IELTS trainer. And uh, today's meeting is about the IELTS, again, about the IELTS tips and tricks um, in the exam, in the IELTS exam, again with my guest, uh, Chris Andrews. Um, well, I know that most of you have already, or some of you have already taken their test during these last few days. So I urge you, please, if you already done, if you are done with your uh, IELTS exam, I ask you to please try to provide us with whatever you still remember uh, from the questions that you had there, either in the speaking test. Hello, Ahmed either in the speaking test, the writing, whatever you can provide us so that we can convey our experience to those who didn't take the test yet. All right? Also, it would be, it would be our pleasure to receive your recommendations uh, about how to master these tests as well, or how, or how did you master uh, this, uh, your test while taking it. Uh, your comments are really important to us and uh, we are waiting for your feedback about your tests that you already had and for those who didn't take the test yet we are uh, looking forward to receive uh, more and more questions about the IELTS exam okay sounds that uh, is Chris here Chris if you're here please write something okay hi Ahmed how are you thank you very much Ahmed. okay sounds like uh, Chris has a problem. Ahmed, would you please contact with Chris? Sounds like uh, Chris has a problem. Anyway, let's uh, discuss the most important uh, questions that might come to your mind. Um, if you have any questions, please write in, your com in the comments. Whatever uh, questions you have, we will be, inshallah, we'll be able to answer them all today. Um, it would be our pleasure to receive whatever questions uh, you have regarding the uh, writing, speaking, listening, or even the reading component, okay? Okay, so uh, thank you very much. So we're uh, waiting for our guest, uh, Chris Enders. Uh, let me ask you guys a question. Um, who took the uh, IELTS test recently? Did you guys take any? Uh, did you take the, the IELTS test recently? Does any of our audience today take the exam recently? If so, just put a like or uh, okay, put a like or I did a fatal mistake with my writing. What is it, Muhammad? Tell us, please. What's your fatal mistake? We all know that the writing is about uh, uh, okay. We all know that the 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 writing is about skills to master. It's just the outlines for every genre that you have to learn, and then you'll have to know how to do a good introduction, uh, how to do a good introduction, a good ending. Okay, and a good body as well. So we are inviting now Chris. Hello, Chris. Hi. Sorry, nice mate. to see you. Tonight. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing, Hannah? Can you come closer to your microphone? I can't hear. You. How's that? It's better. How there are you? Go. Not too bad, thanks. Okay. So, um, catch me up. What have you been telling students about? Well, again, I was telling them that about the writing, writing is mainly about the outline, mastering the outlines of the writing. So they have to know how to write good introduction, good body, and good conclusion for every and each genre. They, differ, they do not differ much. They do not have too many various differentiations between them. They all agree on one concept, which is... Uh, focusing on what to write in the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. Uh, for that reason, Chris, do, we ha do you have any advice for those who didn't take the exam, IELTS exam yet, and they, still they are still struggling with their writing test? Yes, I do, and I have lots of advice. Too much to give today, sure. but uh, I'll give a few points. The first thing to do is to make sure that you understand clear paragraph structure. 
there's nothing special for the IELTS test. We're not studying IELTS. We're studying English and we're studying standard academic writing that university students and high school students are expected to do every day. It's not magical or special or anything like this. It's just plain old academic writing. And to do this, it involves paragraph structure, body paragraphs first, topic sentence, and then a main idea that has Wait, details where you describe it I'm and an example. Thank you. Did you say the body paragraphs first? Yes. What do you mean? Focus on the body paragraphs first. Illustrate this say point. Again. What do you mean by okay. that? We all know that we provide start with the start writing the introduction first. What do you mean when you mm. say body paragraph first? Okay, so here we go. Step number one is think about the writing process first. We shouldn't just start out by reading the question and immediately trying to start writing. You need to have a good plan. The idiom is about horses and wagons. You have to have the horse pull the wagon. The wagon cannot be in front of the horse. Right. And so this means what do you mean by we... who is the wagon or what is the wagon and what is the horse? Sorry for more, so, for more and more questions, but you know, I believe that your, uh, your, your demonstration is really that interesting to the extent that I cannot stop asking here. And I try to put myself in the sure. position of an IELTS exam te test taker. So please forgive me for my very many questions. Sure. So we'll change the idiom and we're going to go with bones in your body then. So think of your backbone. The backbone is the support for your whole body. If you don't have a strong backbone, you can't stand up, you can't move, your heart can't work, your lungs can't work. The same as your essay. If you don't have a strong plan or preparation stage before you start writing your essay, your essay is not going to be able to stand up on its own. And so what I mean when I say start with planning the body paragraphs first is we look at the question. You find how many things the question asks you to do. And then you make a plan about how to do it. This is in the inside of your essay. Forget about the introduction right now. Forget about the conclusion right now. We need to work on the actual answers to your essay. And so for this, for a body paragraph, number one, we need uh, explicit, a complete and direct topic sentence. Then after this, that topic sentence, you must prove that what you are saying is true. You must explain why you are right. So it involves three main ideas as support. Think of them as legs that are, you're standing your, um, topic sentence on. You need three legs, just like a pyramid in Egypt has three points on it of support. This is very, very important. And then each one of these main ideas, you need to back it up with proof, a story, an example, evidence. And so this is the key to a body paragraph. And so I have the first side of the answer, the yes side. People on the yes side say this because what, what, what. Now, the first reason they say it is this, for example, for example. The second reason those people believe what they believe is that, for example, for example. And the third reason that they think they are right is this, because, because, because. Now I can go on to body paragraph two, the other side of the argument. And I do the same thing. These people believe this and the first reason they believe it. For example, the second reason they believe it. For example, the third reason they believe it. For example, now you've got both sides of your argument. Um, if this is a sorry, general test. Chris, um, you mean I do this while I do the writing process itself or when I'm, I am on my brainstorming process? This is for the planning. This is all the pre-writing. Before pre -writing. I have set my pen on the paper to start right. writing sentences, yes. this is my planning. Mm -hmm. so keep, after, keep okay, <laughs> after you have planned out your two body paragraphs, now you need to make sure 
did the question ask you for your own opinion or are you finished with the body paragraphs? If it has asked you for your own opinion, now you need a third body paragraph. I think this, the first reason I think is because what, 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 for example, the second reason why I believe what, what, what is this, for example, and the third reason, again, those three legs for your argument to stand on. Now, after I have clearly outlined both sides and given my opinion, now I'm ready to start with my introduction paragraph. Introduction should have context, background information. This is the paraphrase of the question, of the background information in the question. Then I must have a thesis, what I'm going to say. This essay will discuss what, what, what. You say clearly what you are going to say in the body paragraph number one, what you're going to say in body paragraph number two, and clearly tell your opinion in the thesis, in the introduction, if you are asked to do this. If you give a general thesis statement like, I'm going to outline both sides of the argument and give my well-informed opinion, this is the end of your essay. You haven't given a specific thesis. You've cut something out of a textbook that could be the thesis for any essay. Okay. Therefore, it's the thesis for no essay. Okay, wrapping, and, you mean that the in, in the introduction, I should include three main things, right? Three main points. The first point is uh, the paraphrasing of the writing prompt, writing it in different words from your own, right? Next, yes. number the thesis. The thesis is your own opinion in which you should uh, construct or take the position of this opinion after you're done with the brainstorming. You weigh the two, uh, you weigh the two uh, advantages, for example, and disadvantages, or these people say this and those people are saying that, then you have to know at that moment where exactly where you stand from both situations, then you make up your mind to know where exactly, what, is, what exactly is your opinion. Then you have to mm -hmm. show your opinion in the thesis statement and give the main ideas that you're going to discuss in the body paragraphs later on, right? Absolutely. Write them short. So, the introduction, we don't write these reasons in detail. You just write them, you just give the main ideas of Paragraph yes. Paragraph two. Okay. Yes, you don't want to be arguing or explaining in your thesis. And so, for example, if we have a question like, should government pay for education or should the student pay for education? My thesis sentence is, I'm going to tell you why I think a mixture of government pay and student pay is the best way for education to be funded. And then I have a preview. Firstly, I'm going to be discussing the reasons why people say that the government should pay for education. Secondly, I'm going to tell you the reasons why other people say that uh, tuition is the responsibility of the individual student. And finally, I'm going to tell you the reasons why I think the mixture of these two ways is the best. So there is a clear thesis and preview. I've said exactly what's going to happen in each body paragraph. It's not okay. a surprise. It's, you're okay. not writing a mystery novel here. Yes, Keep sure. that thesis clear at the beginning. I have another question. Can I take well, your words... To me, your words mean that I can take a neutral situation. I don't have to, to be with or against one party against the other. Am I right? So you can take... You're absolutely right, Hent. You can adapt absolutely. to both opinions. And you can um, say that, well, I believe that the combination between both opinions are better for the uh, good of the government and the citizens as well, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Remember... Yeah you're not getting scored on being right or wrong here. You students who are watching, you're getting scored on your English and your complexity, your levels of English. And so 
it's often better to sit on the fence, to stay in the middle. Then I can take the good ideas from this side and I can take the good ideas from this side and use them to support me. And I can choose something I don't like on this side and something I don't like on that side and I can disagree. And now I've got more ideas. I can introduce more complex grammar and more compare and contrast. And so this helps me to raise that English level. Okay, your, your, uh, your demonstration now um, is a good introduction for another question, Chris, which is, um, you know, generating this mu these much ideas may take much time more than the time needed. Any advice regarding, regarding this? Practice makes perfect. Okay. So, so it's a matter this of is why we must train. And so you sit down with your Cambridge IELTS practice books and you do question after question and you write the time down. You're, you know that you are ready to pay your money and take the test when you can do the preparation stages and the writing stages completely and perfectly in 40 minutes. Is now you know that you'll be able to score what you need on the test. If you can't do this in 40 minutes, you're not ready to take the test yet. Okay, I will ask you another question after I give a message to our audience now. Please like and don't forget to share and uh, invite your friends to this meeting. Okay, it would be our pleasure to see you all here now. All right, Chris, my next question. You know, generating all these ideas too might lead to writing more than 150 words in task one and 250 words in task mm. two. Is that okay to write more than the word limit which is required from us? You should. The word limit is the minimum recommended word limit that you need to write if you're going to get past band four. What the average amount of words that a good answer needs for a task two is 300 to 350 words. For task one, it's over 200 words if you hope to score a band eight. Or okay. You it can't do it if you don't have enough ideas. Isn't it too much to be done in 20 minutes? No. This is again why we train. You have to know how much time it takes you to do this. Okay, so it's about time management, right? For that. Yes, and experience. And the much. more that you do it, the faster you become. If, just give me an advice if I'm a student who, who, who depends mainly on myself, my own, and I do my own self-study, okay? And I want to manage my time during the, the exam. How can I do a very good practice so that I can finish right on time? Would you please give me some advice regarding this point? How can I do a good practice? How can I train well and manage my time during being trained? Well, it's very difficult to do on your own if you don't have clear steps to follow. But the important thing about training is that you need step one, two, three, four, and you do the steps the same each time. If you're not doing it the same way each time you do it, you're not really practicing and you're not really training. Think of an athlete who's training for the Olympics. They have the steps and by following the steps, they get better and faster and stronger and more graceful at what they're doing. And it's no different for our candidates here. They need to do it again and again. And by perfecting the steps, they raise their performance level. Okay, and for that, I believe that they have to keep a record for uh, their for time, time spent in each and every uh, task. Absolutely, absolutely. If it takes, it's the same thing on the writing test, or sorry, on the reading test. Correct. If it takes you four days to answer all the questions, it doesn't matter if you get 100%. Correct, correct. But you know what, Chris, let me very honestly speak to you. Um, I advise my students to take whatever time in practicing the, the, uh, the, the first two or three or even four trials of the test because as, I believe that as long as we're still training, we need to practice and practice and we need to listen more 
So we need, it, it's not, it doesn't matter if I listen once, twice or more to the listening um, audio, for example. That would give a better chance for me to get my ears used to listening the English language. And the same mm. for the right. It's better for me to spend more time to be very accurate. And then time after another, I will be uh, um, trained. So it, it won't take me that much time of thinking of the processes, how would it go? Later on, it will move on and on automatically. I won't take that much time that I took in the first and the second try. Am I right, Chris? You are right, Hend. I recommend the same thing to my students too. But I'd like to add that it's important again about how you are listening. Students who are just simply putting the BBC news on in the background and going about their everyday life, this is a very inefficient way to listen because you're not using any of the skills that are involved on the listening test. If you truly want to improve your skills, you have to practice them. And so students, while they're listening, must be taking notes. They must be trying to answer questions or they must be trying to summarize what they're doing or what they're listening to. If they're not, they're simply like a, a flower that's been placed in the window to get the sun to shine on them. And they're growing because of the passive sunlight. They're not trying to grow. And that's the key. They must be trying to listen and trying to hear and understand and write things about what they're listening to. Positive, the positive contribution to the, in the in learning process really matters too, right? Yes, it's the okay. difference between active learning and passive learning. Fair. Are you watching TV or are you actively trying to write questions or trying to answer things about what you're seeing. Take notes about what you're listening to in the movie, for example, or in the BBC, or you just um, try, try to translate or write the summary of a BBC news, for example, or even uh, uh, try to sing along with the song, which uh, you have the lyrics to and so on, right? Yes, write a summary, write an opinion essay about the, the lyrics of the song. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you like it? Do you like, dislike it and why? Sure, but this is again and again. Truly efficient practice. Okay, I will ask you another question, please. <laughs> I'll ask you another question. What if I don't have that much time or the facilities to take notes? Why don't I get my radio on all day, all day long? I don't mean all day long being passive, doing nothing, mm. listening, listening all the time. I mean, get your ears used to gaining from here and from there. Get your ears used to listening to a different language than your mother tongue. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we forgot about the conclusion, Chris. Conclusion in the writing tasks. Task one. I'm sorry that I, I, I I'm so determined to cover all the writing process today because I I can easily see that most of our students and most of our followers are struggling because of the writing process. Many of them have taken the exam maybe once or twice. Um, and or three or four times. Yes. Unfortunately, they are not able to exceed 5.5. So uh, what should I write in the conclusion, Chris? The conclusion is a mirror image of the introduction, a reflection of the introduction. Okay. And so everything I wrote for the introduction simply changed the grammar from the future tense, this essay will be discussing, to the past tense, this essay has been discussing, what, what, what. And at the very end, put a closing sentence on it, a closing idea. And so in considering these issues in the future, weigh your choices carefully, something like that, that shows that the essay is at a conclusion. Do you mean and that? copy paste my introduction can i do this in the conclusion well you need to change your grammar to make sure that we're finishing things off with our grammar instead of opening things up with our grammar but, but the ideas are yes. the same my opinion too is uh well we have so different ways to change uh, uh, the whole uh, writing part or the introduction. We can change uh, words themselves. Do not change the meaning, but change the vocabulary words. You can use yes. synonyms. 
You can use antonyms. You can use different grammar structure. Change words or nouns into verbs. Change them into adjectives, into adverbs, and so on. Use the gerund instead of using the verbs themselves. You can change the grammar structure. And there are so many ways of paraphrasing your um, introduction. Uh, by now, mm -hmm. we will get to know that the paraphrasing is really important for the introduction. In the introduction, you paraphrase the writing prompt given to you. And for the conclusion, you need to paraphrase the introduction that you already wrote before. Am I right? Great. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Done with the writing process? Okay. Shall we move to something else? Uh, sure. And so tell me, Hand, what do you advise on listening first? Many students have a problem with listening and about the skills that they need to use to get a good score on their listening. And so besides listening, what should they do? Okay, well, I believe that listening is a continuous process. They cannot only depend on the listening uh, audio that they listen to and they say, well, I practice listening once or twice a day. I'm sorry, this won't be enough for you to improve and boost your listening skills. You have to keep on listening and reading all day long. And again, as we all know, reading does not only improve your reading skills. Reading improves the four components of the language. Reading will improve your language as a whole. So my first advice and my main advice to everyone, to the test IELTS test takers, to the le language learners, to those who need to learn a new language far away from the English language, any other language, please keep on reading. Reading is a secret. You don't know, Chris, how many students change. In my, you know, I'm a teacher in a school. I, I'm, I'm used to teach upper grades. Um, for those who take my advice and who start reading books, free reading, they do free reading. Um, if I tell you the change that happens in these students' character, they, they change, they personally, the personality changes, the character, the mind formation changes. Also, the way they see the, 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 the life, their perspective to the different issues in life change. Reading is a magic. Reading is really magic. So please, I ask you, test takers, uh, other people who are just uh, learning languages all over the world, to please start reading. Force yourself to read. First, you have, if you don't, if, if you're not into reading and you don't like reading on uh, a specific, on, or on specific fields, try to go to the bookstore. B pick a book, any book that you believe that this book might be interesting to me, okay? Start to force yourself reading this book for at least 15 minutes. Force yourself to do that. Later on, if you feel that you are engaged in this book and you will continue reading, please keep on reading till a certain time, at least 20 minutes a day at least 20 minutes a day. Then later on, if the book is really engaging, you yourself will find yourself really interested to keep on going, to know what's coming, to know what's the plan, what's the plot, how did the problem, how was the problem solved, what was the climax of the problem, and so on. You will feel interested in doing that. So please, my advice to you, regarding the, uh, the, the IELTS listening, the, the, IELTS, the IELTS reading, writing, or whatever, first thing you have to do is to read, okay? Plus, one more advantage of reading. Reading will open the, gate of, the gates of knowledge. Reading will allow you to speak in whatever topics that, might, that you might encounter in the speaking process or in the speaking exam. Do you know, Chris, most of the students um, that are really good at language, they, they have good vocabulary, good structure, and good everything, you know. But when it comes to a specific topic that they are not aware of, they, 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 they don't find ideas to speak about, and this forms a very big obstacle for the test takers. You may have the language, 
but you like the ideas, the knowledge. So again, reading in every aspect, reading in every topic, reading every book that might face you in a bookstore, in your, at your work, or uh, with your sister, with your brother, your wife is reading a book, please try to open these books and get yourself exposed to more reading. That would really help you later on, okay? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Back and to might I add, sure. while you're reading, make sure it's not a library book first, but read with your pen, just like you're reading a textbook at university. Circle the key information. If you see some foreshadowing, a hint about what's coming later, circle it. If you see main ideas, important things, write notes in the, on the edges of the pages and get yourself involved more intellectually. Get more of your mind involved in the books. Our minds are amazing things. And it only takes a small amount of our minds to be able to read. But the rest of our mind is busy thinking about other things. What am I going to cook for supper? What's my wife doing right now? Is it going to be a terrible traffic jam on the way home? And so there's 60% of my mind thinking about other things and only 40% of my mind focusing on what I'm reading. But if I am engaged in trying to find main ideas and circle things and get the small details out, then more of my mind is focusing on my task and I'm going to get more out of it. Okay, this is what makes reading for IELTS different than reading for life, reading for pleasure. Yes. Okay, yes. reading for IELTS is way different than reading for pleasure. As we all know, reading for the IELTS needs certain skills to be mastered. As we said before in our first interview, we need to master these two skills, how to skim and scan. And uh, for that too, if you have a very normal and ordinary book that you really need to learn, need to read, well, we do not say don't read normal books, don't read normal texts, magazines, newspapers. No, no, go for it. But the point is that you should, need, you should have a pen in your hand, underline the main idea, and the main idea is usually there, in the first sentence and the last sen sentence in each paragraph. For that, you will learn how to skim your passage. Skimming your passage at that time would be really good for you to get yourself trained to how to get the main idea in the IELTS test as well. Okay, so read for pleasure while you're reading for the IELTS as well. Two in one. That would be really good for you. Okay. Absolutely. So what were you asking me about, Chris? I almost forgot. Oh, I also wanted to ask you one more thing about the uh, listening test. If students find that while they are listening, they heard the keywords from a question go by, what should they do? They often just panic and they don't know what to do next. Or can you give us some advice, Hand? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. My main my main advice, my uh, most important advice at that point, please do not panic no matter what happens in the, in the listening test. Listening test is a time race, like many other components in the exam, but the listening is mainly about the time race. So please do not panic because once you get this feeling, you won't be able to get rid with it easily. It would be really hard for you and it might affect the rest of the questions. The coming questions. So, so if, should they stop and try to answer that question or should they no, just no, continue no, no. I was going to tell you now. If you felt that you're, you have skipped a question or there was a question that was already answered and you've already listened to this clue word and you couldn't catch, the, uh, catch up with the answer, please forget about it and move quickly to the next question. Do not stop at any listening question. It's just one mark that won't make a big difference in your... It's less than one mark, right? Uh, we have 40 questions in the listening test. Right, Chris? 40 questions. Right. Each question uh, counts one mark, right? Yes. So for losing one mark out of 40 won't make a big difference. What will make a big difference is that 
when you feel like you're messed up, if we, you, you missed a lot of things and you get yourself uh, panicked, at that moment you will lose a lot because you will keep on losing and losing and losing. You know, your mind will get distracted because of the anxiety that may get at that time. So yes. please expose yourself to this feeling. Skip the question, move confidently to the next question. Any more Perfect questions? Perfect advice. Thank Perfect you. advice. Any more questions? No, you know what, Hen? I've really got to get going. My, I've got students already messaging me. I oh. see them coming up here saying, where are you, teacher? Okay, great. Sorry okay. for taking much of your time, Chris, and thank you very much for accepting our invitation today. Hope to see you Thanks soon. for inviting me, Hen. IELTS Idol, please join our next live, maybe next week or the week after tomorrow. Let's, let's, say, let's see what will Chris uh, agree on, okay? Waiting for you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank Bye. you, everybody. Thank you, Hen. Nice to talk to you again. Bye-bye.